爱他个辣椒。Why are you sweet, 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 sweet as Princess Silka? Introductions. I will continue. Video number three. Okay, I walk into the store. I am Principessa Silkita, and we have a conversation. And she asked me about if I have about my what I do, right? She asked me, "Do you have?" Blah, blah, blah. I say yes. And that was a few weeks or maybe months ago. Today, upon her command, in a way, because but that, of course, is only in the field. She can deny that it ever happened. But. Since a few months ago, weeks ago, she asked me about it. Let's say yes upon her command, although that is deniable, because maybe she just was forwarding a phrase. It doesn't matter, but it's mattering to her now more than ever, because they're always just forwarding phrases. They're asking questions where they know the answers to, because they want to recognize God on earth. So God has to be. In hardship, a jeopardy, and threatened, because that is the that is the ground and grain issue of the of the circumstance. Why is she not recognizing me? Why is she not、uh, recognizing me? Why is she pretending? Why is she lying? Why is she like everybody? Why? Why? Because when she now recognizes me, then she can be rude and offensive. Maybe she doesn't want to face her past sins. Maybe it's still some forgiveness needed, or I don't know. If she doesn't recognize me, I don't have authority. Then I am no one to tell her what what is right and what is wrong. I don't tell anything in person, but maybe someone forward stuff. So as she doesn't need to take what I say, so she turns it around. She wants to be the authority instead. In which she patronizes me. Maybe she may object, but does she really? And that is the issue of fine fine tuning, fine motor skills in the brains. Because why is she not、uh, freaking out her own phrases? Why is she copying phrases from somebody else? Does she has nothing to say? I will not give you a sandwich right now. Okay, a sandwich is when you say something nice in order to deliver something which is not nice and end with something nice, so people will not feel offended in their little ego. Right now, I'm just addressing what's not. Do you understand what I just said? I said there is nice stuff which I will not address, implying implication in the word. Do I have to rewind? I am addressing something. You can hear my voice, which is not right. And I told you, I will not give you a sandwich. And for those who don't know what that is. That is, if you actually dare to deliver to a Catholic person or someone who grew up in Catholic, if you dare to criticize that person, meaning if you dare give her something for improving, but in Catholic it's always bad critique, then if you dare, then you have to give her a sandwich, meaning a bun with oh how nice, and then give her the truth, and then again ending the phrase with oh how nice. If I say, you see, everything we do has implications. Because it's the intent and the meaning of what words actually mean is beyond just one phrase. The itacalacho exists also because of what I can give you meaning of stuff, and it takes a while to express that meaning, right? Well, anything anybody ever does, there is something more than just what、uh, you see. There's more. As the method, if I say. 
I will not give you a sandwich. What I am saying is that there are buns. In other words, if I usually, okay, it is actually in a lago. It is actually, uh, how do you say, I'm not flattering you, but I am, how do you say? It's a nice thing to say coming out of my mouth. The implication of I'm not giving you a sun, which means there is buns, cooties, and there is other things, and there is more cooties. Most of the people don't deserve sandwich at all because they only have shit going on. See, I'm saying something nice. I do understand that this person wanted to say something nice to me. I get it because I could see it in her eyes. She just wanted to say, wow, you sing so beautifully. That is amazing. And then she missed out on saying what she was really saying. But instead of saying how beautiful you sing, she says, she says, you should be doing this. Even if it's maybe something meant nice. I get it because I listen to the implication. I listen to what she really wants to say. Do you get my point? But can you? When she comes up with she and everybody else, is so, you know, can you? Okay, let me give you a few examples. You come, you drive a car. And you drive in front of yeah her, for example. But let's, let's say her, because she has to kind of address it today. Because she has to make some choices. And maybe because she can, because I don't ask other, other people to make any choices. Because they're already lost in hell. She hints, hints the bun. So you drive in the car in front of her. You get out of your car and she's going to ask you, do you have a car? How would that make you feel? Now let's say you actually have an appointment with her. And you spend an amazing amount of time looking at the uh, Giorgio Armani catalog to get your best nice clothing on. And you, you, uh, you made amazing research to figure out what are her favorite flowers. By the way, the song I sang today, the aria, was about flowers. I sang about flowers. And you thought, mm, that's beautiful, but can she understand the scent of the flower? Is that not too strong? Because you chose lilies. That is what the aria is about, I sang today. You made a reservation and it took you like a long time because there's a lot of people who want to go there. You had to have a, wait a long time to get it. You prepare all of this and uh, you, maybe a few phrases to pick her up for a date. You've spent all this time preparing for her. In the La Vispera. Uh, Eve, no, and, 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 and forwarding and uh, proposing something to her. And you arrive and you wash your car. And you're so groomed and pretty and beautiful and the flowers are sitting on the back of the seat because you want to have your hands free and she should have her hands free because you're that focused and coordinated to get into the car smoothly because she's definitely gonna wear a dress hopefully you open the door for her yeah that's what you think so you drive up when the car is pretty on and on i can tell you you prepared you get out of your car she's standing there and she asks you do you have a car how would that make you feel? You would honestly think, am I stupid? Or if you had traumas, by the way, you guys, my people, anybody. If you had traumas, you would probably feel that she's offending you now. So if you are like on the Bulgar side, you would probably respond after all your preparation and all your wanting and longing to meet her. You would probably say, fuck you, bitch. Or in Mexico, vale madres. You would get back into the car and then you would stop at the next liquor store, get yourself a bottle of I don't know what and get drunk in frustration. Non-assertivity brings those things poor. So she goes to the Metropolitan Opera of New York, the, the largest and the most recognized opera house in the whole wide world, uh, apparently. And she listens to the star of the show singing opera and now she asks, are you singing opera? Why? Is she stupid? Because she is illiterate. She doesn't know how to talk. She is not assertive. That is one thing I had been addressing in the previous one, two, three, four videos. This is the fourth. Now let me continue. What she really would like to say is maybe this. Maybe what she wants to say. Maybe that's what she wants to say. Princess Silke, 
Thank you so much. I am Novel. Maybe she's an honor that you sing for me. Okay, let me continue. That's not what I want to say, but I just continue. I am truly honored that after all you shit everybody around, I kind of did something where I can actually receive your singing in front of me and not anybody else, but I was the one addressed. I am honored and I bow to you. Okay, so maybe that's what she said in her eyes. But then what she missed out on saying is this. I am so sorry that you have to sit where you sit and stand where you stand and suffer as you suffer. And that you have to come to a coffee shop to sing the and cannot go on stage like you want to and cannot be home as you want to and that you have to go through all this bullshit. I am so sorry because you honestly and truly don't deserve it. Let me bow to you. See that she didn't say it because that would imply let me open the best bottle of wine from the house. Well, that was not actually her. That was um, Laurie's husband. Uh, the first couple I sang live in front. You know how hard that was? How many years to sing? Yeah, my preparation. He was so impressed. He opened the best bottle of wine from the house. But in her case, of course, we I don't drink and she knows it. Or even if she would not know it. She could give me, what beverage can I prepare for you right now? Because this is so beautiful. But then she says, no, I can't do it because I don't have authority here. Or maybe she understands, well, but isn't that your store? Why do I have to offer it to you? Just ask for it. But then she realizes if she asks for it, I'm not going to give it to her because no one told me to do so. I have to be still in hiding. I have to be in secrecy. And this is the thing, um, mi gente, you guys, my people, mi pueblo, this is the thing you have, you have to face. That she rather lies and cheats to me than allow me to go home. She and all the others. She and all the others are not allowing us to be having a home. Hit it. 